Chapter 7. The Three Impossible Challenges. Blem! yelled the Goblin King furiously as he peered into a golden telescope he'd borrowed from a department store. It's them meddlers coming up to the mountain to meddle with me tunnel digging plans, no doubt. Don't fret me, old shoelace, coughed the burger wizard, choking on a pipe full of horse fat. They'll never make it past the three impossible challenges. Phew, said the Goblin King. I've forgotten about them blurping challenges. What all travellers climbing Goblin Mountain have to face? Oh ho! He cried, turning back to the telescope. Here comes the first challenge now. This is going to be f really funty, snickered B.W. You see, that was how the burger wizard pronounced the word funny. And there's a picture of them there. Miss, uh, the Goblin King and uh, B.W. And I think you might have started working out who those characters really are in disguise. Challenge one. The Troll. At that precise moment, down on the mountainside, the earth shook and trembled, and a dirty great troll stepped out from behind a boulder. He had greasy hair because he only bought cheap shampoo, and like all proper trolls, he carried a knobbly wooden club with a nail through it. Oh, he was a fearsome sight. As tall as three men he was, and he went to the gym every week to keep his muscles strong for crushing travellers and also to impress the girl trolls. Polly hid behind Friday, and Friday hid behind an atom, but it was no good. The trolls spotted them anyway. Right, he shouted in a great booming voice. Shut up and don't move. He took a roll of parchment from his nostril and began to read. And there's a picture of the troll threatening them there. To whom I am about to eat. You have stepped onto my patch of the mountain like the fools you are. And now you must face my challenge, you idiots. And it is a mighty challenge indeed. No one has ever succeeded in beating me at this challenge, not in hundreds of years. And the challenge is this. You cannot get past me unless you guess my name. And you will never guess my name. And when you have failed to guess my name, I will crush your bones up and eat you. And that is my challenge. Yours sincerely, Arthur the Troll. And there's a picture of his letter signed at the bottom there, Arthur the Troll. This looks like trouble, Friday gulped. Shall we blow the horn of Kazal Kazal? Nah, we only get one go at that, said Polly. I reckon we can handle this one. Bravely, she stepped forward. Your name is Arthur the Troll, said Polly, and don't lie, because I know it is. Now, yangle off, Airy. Lucky guess, muttered Arthur the Troll as he yangled off. I'm going to the gym. No way, shouted the Goblin King in disbelief. Somehow the meddlers got past the troll. Don't you worry, laughed B.W. It's the witch next. That'll muck them up. Challenge two. The witch. Down on the mountain, a secret door in a rock opened with a scary creaking sound and a witch came out hobbling along with her little bent back and leaning on a cane. I'm going to do spells on you, she cackled. Yes, that's right, spells. I'm going to muck you up. Did you hear that? Said Friday in fright. Spells. Quick, said Polly. Blow the horn of Kazal. Hold on a moment. She's not getting nowhere near us. It was true. The witch was moving along at about one centimetre a minute. As the travellers watched, she was overtaken by a dead snail. When I get near enough, I'm going to do spells, called the witch, brandishing her cane. Then you'll be sorry, spells. And there's a picture of the witch being overtaken by the dead snail. Friday and Polly looked at each other. Shall we escape now or later, said Friday. Later, said Polly, after supper. 
So Friday fetched some sticks to start a fire, and Polly took out the, uh, the pies and some apples, and they made a fine meal, and all the while the witch inched along, occasionally calling out her threats. After they had eaten, the travellers sat and talked a while, then they played a few games of backgammon, and after that they did a, a 10,000 piece jigsaw puzzle. Altogether it was a very jolly time, but eventually Friday stood up. Well, we'd better hurry off or the witch will catch us in a few hours, he said. So up Polly got and together they continued on their way. Just you wait till I'm close enough to do my spells, the witch called after them, shaking her fist very slowly. Moss was growing on her shoes. Then you'll be sorry. Unbelievable, screamed the Goblin King, staring into the telescope. Somehow their meddlers beat the witch and all. True admitted B.W., but they'll never survive the final challenge. What? That thing that looks like a gherkin? sneered the Goblin King. Come off, come off it. He's the easiest one of the lot. Challenge three. That thing that looks like a gherkin. Down on the mountain, the thing that looked like a gherkin rolled menacingly towards the travellers. Friday stepped on it with his boot and they continued on their way. Frimp, shouted the Goblin King. If you ask me, them impossible challenges is a load of old toilet. Oi, Captain Ankles, he called, and instantly the, go the Goblin Captain appeared, accompanied by his faithful lieutenant, Wink Balloon. Now listen, Ankles, said the Goblin King. I want you to go and capture some meddlers for me. It's a big important job, right? So take your best soldiers with you. Take Whippy, Livermunk, Big Steve, Funk Whistle, Soup Dog, Jingles and Yak Triangle. And don't you let me down, Ankles, or I'll introduce you to my bashing fist. Once he dealt with that, the Goblin King turned to more important matters. Oi, Burger Wizard, where's me supper? He demanded. Right here, me old balaclava, laughed B.W., holding up a plate of greenish meat and thistles. And there in the cave, the two ruffians dined on their slops like common swine, while all around the goblins shrieked and hooted and roared. Ha, 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 laughed the goblin king through a mouthful of pig's bladder. This is the life. And that's the end of the chapter. The next chapter is called Chapter 8, Night on Goblin Mountain.